We're scoreless after one period of play here at Madison Square Garden between the Flyers and Rangers. Bobby Taylor, Ed Van Epp, and Gene Hart. And with me is the Rangers, John Davidson. And John, I would have to say, we mentioned a little bit in the first period, this has to be an unusual situation for the Rangers, having to struggle to see if they're going to make the playoffs. That's exactly right. I would say, uh, as of a week ago, it looked pretty dim. A lot of the other teams had a lot easier schedules than we did. We went into Buffalo, we got beat in the last uh, 41 seconds there, and then they got an empty netter to beat us 4-2, but we went up to Montreal and played a great game, and they got, the boys came out with a 6-2 win, and this evening we had a real fine first period, and uh, things are looking good for us right now. We're starting to get into a real groove, which uh, I hope if we do make the playoffs, we're going to be a tough team in that first round. Goaltending, of course, is always a big uh, plus in the playoffs, and Rangers have uh, really been uh, getting a lot of the share of heat about their goaltending. Young uh, Mr. Baker, and uh, I'm just wondering how, uh, how well has he been holding up under that fire? Well, you know, I think uh, Glenn Resch, when he got traded from the Islanders to Colorado, he told me something. He says, you know, uh, the goaltending can only play as well as a team plays, and that's and it's essentially that's exactly true. Pete Peters' uh, goal average has gone up a little bit, and his win loss is a lot different than it was because they have a lot of younger guys behind the blue line. When you have uh, the big Daly out and the big Watson out, that makes a big difference back there. And our our guys, uh, you know, goaltenders are the first ones to be blamed, and it's an old cliche, but in a sense, it is true, and because they're the most visual people out there. But uh, he he's sort of a strong-willed type of person, and uh, maybe even a little bit cocky. And he's been hanging, uh, hanging in there pretty well. He played a great game in Montreal, a good game in Buffalo before then. And uh, tonight he had a good first period. So he's, he's starting to come around. Uh, Wayne Thomas has worked a lot with him in practice. And uh, Dougie Sotard, another one of the fellows, is playing in New Haven. Though. He got sent down so he could get the playing time. And uh, I think he'll be called up probably for the playoffs. And with those two guys, you know, it's maybe not the greatest in the world, but they're working at it and they're trying hard. I think you mentioned that one key word, cocky. And I think if a goaltender has that cockiness in them, that helps them over the rough spots. Well, you know, it's amazing. I think most young goaltenders don't have it at all. And they're, because they're, you know, you're in the big leagues now and your eyes are wide open. You're not quite sure how to handle it. But if you come up as a young guy and you're a little bit cocky, uh, one guy in the league that's very cocky for a young guy is Beaupre in Minnesota. And uh, from his own players have told me that. Louis Nanny's told me that. And it sure helped him. If you, if you can stay strong mentally over an 80-game season where you travel a whole bunch, and then I think you'll be ready for the playoffs. Then you're not in awe of the, of the McLeishes and the Barbers and the Clarks, et cetera. And you can go out and play a lot better. John, uh, quickly, you know, you're, you're fighting for the playoffs. You have three games remaining. And uh, would you have to win all three, do you think? No, I don't think so. We're, we're a couple points up now. Washington's got a tough schedule. They're in Boston, in the island. And they have uh, Detroit, I believe, at home. We've, we've got Chicago at home Friday. The day before Thursday, we're in the island. And we're also down in Philly. I think a lot of it might have to do with the outcome tonight. I think we need a point or two here tonight bad and I think uh, in all honesty we had a real good first period and we've got a good shot at this game as well as the Flyers do. John I want to thank you for being our guest. Oh pleasure. Love it. <laughs> Gotta do something. <laughs> John Davidson will be back with more but first these messages. Bobby Taylor along with a former Flyer and now one of the most successful junior coaches in Canada Terry Crispin. And my new agent. <laughs> Welcome Bobby. Good to have you my agent. Crispy uh, Junior hockey, uh, you haven't been back in around the junior ranks for tons of years, I won't say how many, but how are you enjoying it? Uh, we're loving it, Bobby. My family and I have come back, adjusted, and it's just a super, every day is something new. I'm babysitting uh, 20 kids that are from 16 to 19 years old. In fact, I give you a, one of my guys just to babysit for a little while to send <laughs> back to me, but we're having a great time at it, Chief, and, and it's just an exciting life to be in. Is there a uh, cost of concern with all the young players that are moving up to the National Hockey League? Does that delete the junior ranks, do you think? <laughs> it makes the coach's life a little <laughs> tough. I talked to Keith Allen on the phone the other day, Bobby, and I said to him, you know, I appreciate the fact that you're, uh, you like your talent and the young kids, but about Christmas time, can you get me a job, Keith, when it's <laughs> all backfires? No, it, I think, Bobby, if, if the young lad is... Uh, as capable of playing, I'm all for him going because you know and I know that from the day we strapped our skates on, we wanted to get up there. And these kids, Bobby, are no different. But I just pray that somebody takes hold and decides that when these kids are ready, don't bring them up too early because right now, for every boy that comes up, steps in and does the job, they're bringing seven or eight that are just getting all confused and totally out of whack. Tonight's game, of course, uh, the Leafs are doing a sound job of checking and forechecking. Have you had a chance to watch this team very much? No, we've only seen a couple of games. We're so far up north, we get can TV up there, Bobby, and it comes a week late. <laughs> you must be in Flin Flon. Just, we're just, just a little bit north of Flin Flon. <laughs> we haven't watched a whole lot of them, but I'll tell you what, from what we've seen of them, Mike Nicklock's done a, a tremendous job here, and, and I guess the biggest thing they say, Chief, in Toronto is that Mike Nicklock has respect of the players, so as you know, that's a giant step forward. Your club, 
in first place. Uh, you brought them up to first place last year. In your third year of coaching, you took over a team that was in last place, and you brought them up there. Uh, was there any great strategy change, or what was your secret? No, no, you know what, Chief? I'd love to say with a whole bunch of strategy and give you a whole bunch of mumble-jumble X and O's, but no, I had a whole bunch of good kids that decided they wanted to work. I'm working with a gentleman called Sam McMaster, who I think is one of the best minds in hockey for finding young talent, and that certainly makes my job tremendously easier but I think the biggest thing in the last year and this year is that my kids are keen and they enjoy it and they want to play and if you can keep that enthusiasm going the talent you don't have is made up in that area. You know you and I talked a couple of years ago and you said that you had no designs on a pro career in coaching that you wanted to stay with the kids do you still have that feeling? Right now I have Chief uh, if the right opportunity came along I would be very interested in pro but I have had uh, this past year a couple three four opportunities to go pro but to me, my next step will be NHL, and I don't want to sound, as I said, uh, fourth or anything, but I feel that I've served my time, I know what hockey's all about, and if I'm going to move my family again and get back into the rat race, and uh, as you and I know, the back biting, etc., then I want to go where it's all at at the top, and that would be my next move. Well, Crispy, I'd like to wish you the best of luck, and I hope you get there soon, and make sure you say hello to that family for me, will you? Chief, I will, and I want to say to all the people back in Philadelphia, for me and my family in the cold Sault Ste. Marie, hi to all you people down there, and we hope to see you soon. Our guest, Terry Crispin, will continue with our intermission activities, but first, these words. The Flyers 5-3, to three. Bobby Taylor and Gene Hart with me, as Gene mentioned, Don Cherry and Don. We've seen a lot of goals scored this year, and uh, I'm just wondering, uh, have you found a body check out here in the league? Oh, no, there's no body <laughs> check. There's a body check here at the penalty box, I'll tell you. But I'll tell you, this Gretzky, I've done about 10 other games, so isn't he something? I mean, this, this goes on game after game, and you say, well, you know, you... You want to kind of put him down a little and not go in raptures, but I mean, this goes on all the time. I, it's, it's ridiculous. You've watched him quite often, and I know that it's it's kind of a hard question to ask because really, with his stats, it's hard to say how do you defense the kid, but there has to be some way that you can at least cut down on the number of goals he well, scored. Well, Boston's got a, got his number pretty well. I don't think he's got a goal against them, and I think he only had an assist last year. They got this Casper kid, and he goes anywhere. If he goes to the bathroom, he goes with him. <laughs> and he turns with him, and he's got him measured pretty good. And uh, the strangest thing that I don't understand is why teams don't get the... Uh, films of the Boston games and see, see what happens. We used to do the same thing, Greg Shepard used to do the same thing against Perot. And you meet him as you're coming out, but I don't know, this guy's a magician. And uh, I, one thing I got to comment, I didn't like the way the referee, Kerry Fraser, went over to Holgram when he got the penalty and skated six inches in front of him and went like that. I mean, you know, the, don't ask for trouble. In the old days, the referees say two minutes, let's go, and that's it. Uh, uh, fire's got to start hitting. You saw right there in the last minute when they started to hit the puck is lying around. That's their game, but uh, it's pretty tough when you're in the penalty box, I guess, all the time. A lot of young guys in the league, and I think that's what some people say. That's why it's such an offensive league right now. Well, uh, I tell you, you see guys 17 and 18 out there, especially on defense. Uh, you see them being turned into knots. That's where I notice it. Not so much on uh, forwards because everybody can skate and shoot. But the young defensemen are just getting murdered. Uh, Gretzky going in on them and that. And that's why I think the major reason is that the defense don't know how to play defense. What can they do? I know you uh, you say that the league is, with all the 18-year-old drafts, uh, there's a lot of guys in there. I mean, do, is that 18-year-old draft going to be the thing of the past, or should they cut that out? Well, personally, I think, and uh, I'm out of, uh, you know, I'm not coaching now. If I was coaching or general manager, I'd want them all. But I think they're going to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. They're going to have people not going to the junior games because as soon as the guy develops, they're gone. And, uh, you know, people stop, and that's where the farm system is, and that's where they mature from. But, but let me say something about our Canadian uh, uh, junior club. Are they something? Uh -huh. Seven nothing. They murdered those Russians. I, I want to get that in because we're always getting t heard about that eight one <laughs> job. So we're murdering the Russians now. <laughs> I know all the young kids. And they say they're faster skaters. Oh, I saw a game here. You would have loved it. Keith Allen, Pat Quinn would have loved it. They beat the Russians. They had an American. Uh, I think his last name was Cave. Dave Caves. I'm not sure. But he let the game go. It was absolutely beautiful, <laughs> and they hammered him seven nothing. A lot of goals. Uh, not. A lot of hitting is quite a bit of an absence of hitting, but in your mind of talking to a lot of people, do they like this type of game? No, more? they really don't. I mean, when you're seeing Gretzky do it, it's all right. But, you know, you go on the road and I'm walking around. They say, Don, you know, 9, 8, 10, 4, games like that. Absence, uh, I, I heard that Harry Deal, and this is the truth, he wrote a letter to the Players Association. He wanted to know if there was a rule they'd put in that nobody can hit Gretzky. 
I don't know what the answer was, but I see Cochran's trying to take. That's the first guy I've seen trying to take a, a run at him was Cochran. He's tough to hit, but if you hit him and hurt him, it's like ripping the flag of Canada or something. <laughs> I know. Don, I want to thank you very much for being our guest. Yeah, I loved it. Our guest, Don Cherry, and again, coming up on the TV side, we're going to have the highlights of the Flyers' win over Calgary Monday night. And on the radio, Gene will be discussing that great Wayne Gretzky. But stay tuned as we pause for these messages.